This is Just to Say, Poems of Apology and Forgiveness by Joyce Sidman. This is Just to Say, I have eaten the plums that were in the ice box and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. William Carlos Williams. Part one, apologies. To Mrs. Garcia in the office, this is just to say, I have stolen the jelly donuts that were in the teacher's lounge and which you were probably saving for teachers. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and so gloppy. Too bad the powdered sugar spilled all over my shirt and gave me away. By Thomas. To the statue of Florence P. Scribner. Lucky Nose. I am very sorry for assaulting your nose before every spelling test. When I first came here, I noticed you right away. Your kind eyes, your stiff hair rolled in a ball like my grandmother's. Your nose looked so strange and magnificent. I asked Miley about it. Pale and smooth from a thousand rubbings, she said. Before that first spelling test, it felt like a cool stone under my hand, calming me. In a hundred years, your nose may be worn down to nothing, and so I am very sorry. But think of all the little children again and again to who you gave that cool stone of luck. By Bao Vang. To Kyle. I got carried away. Kyle, I'm sorry for hitting you so hard in dodgeball. I just really get carried away in situations like that. Kids screaming and ducking, coach bellowing, all those red rubber balls thumping like heartbeats against the wall and ceiling, blinking back and forth like stoplights that really mean go, go, go. See? I even got carried away in this poem by Reuben. To Reuben, dodgeball crazy. Sorry, Rubes, for belting you as hard as I could in dodgeball. I'd like to say I wouldn't do it again, but I'd be lying. By Kyle. To Mrs. Mertz. Fashion sense. I am so sorry for my rude words. The classroom was so dead. No one had anything more to say about old Yeller, and we were all crazy to get outside. The silence seemed like a hundred crushing elephants. So, I raised my hand and made that comment about your dress, and everyone burst out laughing. You smiled, but your smile looked like a frozen pond. People were high-fiving me on the way down to lunch, but I felt like a traitor. You know how the words slip out and you can't believe it, and they echo in your head forever and ever. All through lunch, all through recess, all the next day, I wished I could take those words back. I kept thinking of what you always say to us. Words can help or hurt. The choice is ours. I want to rewind to that moment and say instead, Mrs. Mertz, that dress makes you look like a princess. You really are a queen, not a princess. Our queen, Reina de la Clase. I hope you will overlook the transgressions of your loyal but loud-mouthed subject and forgive me. P.S. I notice you're not wearing that dress so much anymore. Green is not good on you anyway. I like the new one with blue in it, which makes you look thinner. By Carmen. To my mom. Brownies 
Oops. I smelled them from my room, a wafting wave of chocolateness. I listened for movement, ears pricked like a bat's. I crept down, stepped over the sleeping dog. I felt the cold linoleum on my bare toes. I saw the warm, thick brick of brownies. I slashed a huge chunk right out of the middle. The gooey hunks of chocolate winked at me as I gobbled them. Afterward, the pan gaped like an accusing eye. My head said, oops, but my stomach said, heavenly, by Maria. To Manga, my hamster. I wish I could set you free, like that day you escaped and ran all over the house. That was an amazing day. My mother screamed, my sister cried, all because you were loose somewhere burrowing through pillows and toys. When mom finally found you huddled in the mop bucket and you bit her, you looked so fierce like your wild cousins that roam the jungles of Asia. I wish I had jungles to give you. I wish that could be your life. Please forgive me. All I have to offer is this warm, cozy cage and my fingers scratching behind your ears. By Ricky. To Einstein, my dog. It was quiet. It was quiet. No machines beat. You looked like you were sleeping. Your nose was still wet. Your ears were still silky. But inside, something was crumbling. It's not sleep. It's a coma, Baba said. Harsh voice in the quiet room. We have a decision to make. I did not want to decide anything. I wanted to stay quiet with the feel of your fur. But inside, all my cells and nerves were screaming. Heads nodded. The decision was made. You did not move. You did not shudder. Yet life left you. I'm so sorry we had to do this. We wanted to save you some pain. I hope we did the right thing. Is death ever right? I don't know, but I hated having to choose it. And I hate the quiet in our house without you. By Tencent. To my brother, Lamar. Secret message. Where would you hide a secret message? Under a pillow? In a pocket? Between two slices of bread? Where would you hide a message that wants to be found? Maybe it shouldn't be found. Maybe writing it is most important. What happens after doesn't matter. Well, big brother, here's my secret message. I'm sorry I'm such a weird kid. I'm sorry I embarrass you. I am hiding it here under the seat in your car. I wonder if you will ever, ever find it. By Daron. To Daron, little brother. Little brother, you are one weird kid. Hiding stuff under my seat. Why, why you gotta hide? Life should be lived extra large. Look at me, man. I'm living as large as I can. I know when I got to stand and when I got to run. But I've been thinking about you, little bro, since you put that note in my car. You got your own stuff, stuff I don't have. You got sticky shoes. They stay on the ground. You got brains that work all the time, not just sometime. You got that curly hair of mama's. You don't remember, but but I do. You got that smile, that dumb, sweet smile that ain't seen badness yet. Keep all that stuff. Keep it. Hold tight to it. 
Hold it, little brother here. You're going to need all that stuff. Maybe not the smile. Get rid of that or you'll end up on the street under somebody's wheel. But the other stuff, don't let it get beat out of you. Stay strong. I'll be showing you anyways. Showing you how to live large, extra large like me. By Lamar, Duran's brother. At the bottom, editor's note. Duran changed a few words in his brother's poem so that we could print it. To my mother. Spelling bomb. I can't believe I lost. I know I disappointed you. Do you really think I don't care? I know how important it is to win. I know I disappointed you. I saw it in your face when I misspelled. I know how important it is to win. I studied hours and hours. I saw it in your face when I misspelled. I saw you turn away from me. Even though I study hours and hours, I never seem to be your champion. I saw you turn away from me, and in that moment would have given anything to be your champion, to see your bright, triumphant pride. In this moment, I would give anything. Do you really think I don't care for your bright, triumphant pride, which I can't believe I lost? By Anthony. Author's note, this is my favorite poem form, called a pantone. The second and fourth lines of each stanza are repeated as the first and third lines in the next stanza. It is also supposed to rhyme, but Mrs. Merce says rhymes are not as important as meaning. Two question marks. A waste of heart. I'm sorry for loving you because you never notice me. I'm sorry I stare at you so much in class trying to figure out what's on your mind. I'm sorry for taking the time in the morning with my hair. Sorry for trying on six shirts to find the one that makes you say, Hey girl, looking fine, because you never say it. I'm sorry because I know I'm wasting my heart on you. Yeah, I'm sorry for loving you. So sorry that I think I'm going to stop. By Renisha. To Balvang. What was I thinking? Wow. Am I really in the principal's office? She's bigger than I thought. Is that gray hair on her neck? Her dress is the color of ripe plums. She's asking so many questions. I have such a bad feeling in my stomach. Bao Vang is my best friend. She's always laughing. She was laughing when she hit the fire alarm. It was an accident. She was just fooling around. The principal's eyes are like hot sparks. My parents will be so angry. They will yell and yell. My mouth is opening. I'm blabbing about Bao Vang and the fire alarm. I can't believe this is happening. The principal sends me away. I slink out like a whipped dog. Balvang, my best friend. I told on her, then pretended I hadn't. Will she ever forgive me? By my Lee. To my Lee, the river of forgiveness. Here I am, reading my Lee's poem. I am wading into the river of forgiveness, thinking of alarm bells, of breaking glass, of confusion and the fear that crushes your heart when you've done something wrong. I feel cold and alone, fighting the water as it pulls at me and fills my eyes. Will I ever make it across? I keep thinking of a friend who helped explain the world, whose arm is always around my shoulder a friend who stands with me in the crowd. There she is, my friend on the other side of the river. She's the one looking worried when I cough and choke, the one about to jump in after me. But wait, my feet are touching. 
I've reached the sandy bank. I've crossed the river of forgiveness. I open my arms to her. Bye, Balvang.